Hey everyone, it's T-Lore, and today I wanted to show you a little bit about how I put magnets into some of my things that I make, as well as steel pins that are press fit in there. So I don't use any glue, I just take a piece like this and press the magnet into it. Now this is 3mm acrylic, and I'm using magnets that are either 8th inch thick or 16th, inch, 16th of an inch thick. Now this distinction is important, and you can kind of see it on this a little bit. Um, this tray right here, you can see that there's actually a little bit of a lip where there's a difference between the 3mm acrylic and the 8th inch birch plywood. We also see that when we look at the magnets that are on this, you can see that it sticks out past the end of the, the acrylic itself. And that little bit of a lip is enough to really help catch it in place. And on something like this, I'll just take this top layer off here. What you can see is that these actually have a little bit of a, a catch to them. So I'm trying to push it off sideways and it doesn't want to move. And that's because of that little tiny offset sticking out right there. And it get, keeps it helps keep it in place, but still allows it to freely spin. So I use the thicker 8th inch magnets on the surface that I want to be the center. And then I use these thinner ones, either in the piece of acrylic or whatever goes on top, so that uh, it just it doesn't need to be as thick. And if I use both of those thick ones, then there would be extra magnets sticking out of both pieces. So by doing it that way, I'm able to keep everything in line, and I'm able to keep everything together. And then I also use a similar technique with some steel pins. So if we look at this, this has a couple pieces of acrylic that have a steel pin pressed into them. So this steel pin is sized so that it's just slightly bigger than the hole in the acrylic. And then this hole that's in both pieces of the wood is slightly bigger than the pin. So that way I can spin this freely and I am able to have it connected to both the acrylic pieces. Now there's no glue used at that, it's just all in the press fit. If you get it too tight, you can get some cracking. If you get it too loose, then you'll be able to turn one of the acrylic pieces and the other piece will not move with it. So I was able to do that a little bit, but I was holding pretty hard there. This, this is set up so that I can turn it and it's always going to move both dials. Now, how do I get this so that it's fit snug but not too tight? I actually take a piece of paper and when I'm putting this together, now I've already put this together so it'll be hard to get that back in there. Um, I slide this piece of paper in between and then I press them together. So this is basically two thicknesses of printer paper and that's what keeps enough of a gap so that this spins freely but isn't so loose that it just spins out of position. And sometimes you can come back and just loosely pull on it a little bit just to give it a little bit more space if you need to. And then since this hole is pretty loose at the bottom, it's able to just line right back up and it spins in place. So I have this style here that uses that pin, these that use that magnet, and again I'm able to press on it. And you can hear that click and that's it clicking over the magnet after I press on it pretty hard. Once this is glued in place, it'll be pretty hard to press it out of place. Uh, but even if you do, it doesn't go very far. It has this wood buffer here to keep it from going too far off the magnet, and it'll automatically recenter back on there. So how do you find what a press fit is? So this is a little bit hard to see, but this is a sample test that I did where I took a measurement of the magnet. So I've got my calipers. I'll switch it to millimeter here. And it's a magnet, so it's a little hard to measure, but... We can see that that comes out to 4.31 on the magnet. So what I did was I went through and I made these holes. Um, you can kind of disregard the numbers, but you put in whatever you put as the hole size and your laser curve will come, to, come into play as well. Um, actually, it looks like that wasn't zero properly. Let's try that again. Okay, 4.7, let's call that 4.75. That makes more sense. I have a hole here that's 4.8, 4.7, and 4.6. It's a little scattery on how the laser engraved it, but these are really just for reference. And so I can try the 4.8. You can see the magnets just go right through. It's very loose. That's, that's not going to hold any magnets in place. 4.7. It's also loose, but you can see there's very little play with it. 
uh, but you still don't want it quite there. Now, 4.7 is less than 4.6, but there's some laser kerf that's involved. So if we go with 4.6, I can actually softly press it in there. It's a little bit softer than I would normally like, but this is probably a good amount for doing it by hand. Now, what I use now is probably closer to a 4.5. And how I'm able to do that is I can take one of these pieces here. I take a magnet and I loosely stick it in at the top. So this is sticking out way more than you would normally want it to. And then I take it into this watch press that I uh, picked up. This is about $15, so pretty cheap. It has these little um, nylon pads on it, and then I just added this acrylic piece here just so that it has a flat surface. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little hole in each of these. That does make it a little difficult. So I put this on there, and I can press it back on. Try that again here. Easier if you set it down. Um, So we put this in there, press it down, and you press it as far as it'll go in. Now you can see it still sticks out a little bit. That's again an eighth inch magnet in a three millimeter piece of acrylic. And I can just show that really quickly. So it's 2.8 millimeters thick versus the magnet is 3.18, which if you look at that is exactly one eighth of an inch. Uh, and this is a little bit under. So that difference gives me a little bit of that ledge that this can attach with. And so now that that's pressed in there, it can go in place, uh, and you can see these don't have that magnetic overlap that I was talking about where it's sticking out. Um, if I were to press this in such a way, now it's sticking out the back, you can see that it keeps it from sliding around. So I'm just using that little difference between the thickness of the magnet and the acrylic to help locate it in place. And I've used a little test piece to figure out what size I need to cut in order for my magnets and spring pins to work how I want them to work. So if you want it loose, you go for a, a little bit larger of a number. If you want it really tight, like these magnets, you go for a bit smaller of a number. And now that that's all put together, I have these magnets on wheels that are in here. They, smooth, they spin really smoothly. They hold their position because they're magnetic. And then I have this pin here that lets me spin a piece as well. Uh, without having direct access to this wheel since it gets a second piece put around it So you can see this is how it'll function when it's all put together So you can spin this wheel and then you can spin the inner wheel by turning the dial So that's how I'm able to use magnets and spring pins to make all these rotating counters on some of the things that I make